Hello and welcome to day 27 of 30 Days of Lightroom. Today we're going to be editing an image and then showing you everything you need to know about exporting so you can share your work with the world. Hello and welcome back to our series where we teach you everything you need to know about Lightroom in 30 days. Now today we are back in Lightroom Classic where we've spent most of our journey throughout this 30 days. We took a little bit of a detour. We showed you Lightroom on the computer as well as Lightroom Mobile. Those are the cloud-based editing programs. Now we're back in Lightroom Classic. So we're going to be editing an image and then going through the entire export dialog. We've got some amazing tips for you. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we're going to be editing this awesome photograph today. Now, if you want to follow along, you can download this raw photograph completely free. Just follow the link right down below. So we're going to start off here in the develop tab and I want to do a little bit of editing. So we're going to go here to basic. We're going to go ahead and apply an auto setting to our image. That looks really good. Now, the next thing I want to do is go right into our masking. So we're going to click on our masks. We're going to go ahead and make sure we detect both people. So let's go ahead and click on the person the entire person. Yep, that looks right. Let's go ahead and add a person. Yep, we're going to get them both and then click here on continue. It's going to go ahead and make a mask for both people at the same time. We're just going to go around right down here is create mask. Perfect. Now with this mask, we're just going to go ahead. I'm going to increase the contrast just a little bit. That looks right. Let's go ahead and bring up the shadow level and then bring up our exposure level just a little bit. And this is going to be on both subjects at the same time. Let's go ahead and lower down the highlights. I want a little bit more contrast on the subject. That looks cool. Now I want to do a little bit more with the sky. So let's go ahead and create a new mask here. We're going to go to select sky. There we go. And then I want to just like make it super blue. So we're going to go to our color temperature. And we're going to go really blue. And then you know what? Maybe we can make it even. Uh, uh, let's see right about there is looking really good. OK, fantastic. I like that a lot. Let's go ahead and create one more mask. We're just going to do a really big radial gradient. I'm going to click and drag here from the center out, and then we're just going to bring up our exposure. OK, it's going to be nice and subtle, just making sure that is really, really feathered. OK, so this radial gradient, we want to bring our feathering all the way to 100. OK, we're going to do a little bit of a crop. So let's go ahead and change our crop and we're going to go to where it says uh, angle. You can change the angle here or you can use this icon here to actually trace the horizon. So I'm going to just trace. I'm going to click and drag right here to just trace this horizon. There we go to make sure that's nice and level. Um, there we go. That looks fantastic and hit enter and that's going to work on our crop. And from here, I want to crop in just a little bit more. So let's go back to our crop tool right here and we're just going to click and drag in. All right. Now we're almost done with our edit. The last thing I want to do is just kind of remove these little lines here on the floor and we're going to go to our remove tool. Make sure that use generative AI is checked and then let's use our open and close brackets to make our brush small. I'm going to hold space bar and then click and that's going to allow me to zoom into my image. So let's go ahead and simply like paint over this area, make our brush a little bit larger. Again, use the open and close brackets to do that. Fantastic. I'm just going to see if I can get rid of all these like, uh, you know, they're on roller skates, right? So I think they just marked up the marked up the pavement just a little bit, but I'm going to try to remove all this at the same time. So let's go ahead and highlight all of these things. Fantastic. All right. How fun. Almost done here. Ah, <laughs> I'm going to hit control or command Z for undo paint a little bit too much. All right, all that looks good. Let's go ahead and click right here on remove and it's gonna remove all this with AI. Fantastic. And then we're gonna be able to see some variations as well. All right, and remove, remove, remove. That looks amazing. Space bar and then click there. Uh, and then here we have our variations for generative remove. And you know what? That looks great. I'm super happy with this image. So. We can see the before and after really easily. Just click on that slash key right above enter or return. So let's click on that slash. There's the before and there's the after. Really, really nice. And we're ready for export. So this is what today's mostly about. It's going to be about exporting. We edit our image. We're really happy with it. We're ready to share it with the world. So let's go ahead and we're going to show you everything about the export dialog. So we're going to go to file and then down here to export. Now you can see there's an export with previous. Basically, this will just apply the previous settings. So if you exported an image to a specific place, it would just, you know, do the exact same thing. But we're going to be working with export here. 
fantastic. So let's go ahead on the top and then we're going to go through uh, all of this stuff. Okay. And then tomorrow we're going to do a special class just on watermarking, which is fun. Okay. So export location. This is the first one. Same, ex basically export to. You can just put this in the same exact folder as the original photograph. You can put it in a specific folder, but I usually like to use choose folder later, which is, again, it says it right on there, useful for presets. So let's go ahead and click there. So once I hit export, when I'm done with this dialog, it's gonna pop up a finder menu and I can choose where I would like to put this. Generally, I just leave it on this setting. Okay, now if there are existing files, like it, if it has a file that has the same name, it's gonna ask me what I'd wanna do, if I wanna overwrite it, if I want to give it a new name. So that's, that's perfect. Okay, next we're going into file renaming, which is actually incredibly powerful. I like to include my edit and a lot of information when I export these images out. So here in file name, let's go ahead and open that up. Now I want to go ahead and rename, and then you have a lot of options you can choose from. You have a custom name that you can enter with the original file number, with a sequence, X of Y, date, file name, and a file name sequence, okay? So there's a ton here, but I want you to click right there on the edit, right here on the very bottom, because this is where it gets really powerful. This file name template editor, this is so cool, okay? So this is basically where your like recipe lives and then it kind of tells you what this is going to be. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click here and then just hit the backspace or delete key. Okay. And now I can like put any of this stuff that I want to here into my recipe. So let's go ahead and we're going to put file name. Let's go ahead and hit insert. So the name of this uh, image is actually ex export. Okay. Like I because it's an included sample image with this tutorial, right? So I renamed it export already. So like that's that's the actual name of this image. But if you're just bringing it in from your camera, it might be like DCS5093, who knows, okay? But you can go ahead and include the file name or the original file name. You could do a sequence if you want. You could, of course, do title. But I really like this custom text, okay? So I'm gonna just type in a hyphen and like literally anything you type in here, like will just be included in your file name. How cool is that? All right, let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm gonna type in a hyphen there and then where it says custom text, I'm just gonna click on insert right here. So it's gonna be the file name and then custom text afterwards. And of course you can just make your own recipe. So let's hit done. And now here you're going to have your after, or you're going to have your custom text. So let's just say like uh, final and then we'll just call this color, okay? so the name of this file is going to be export final color. All right, because remember, this was the actual file name to start with. All right, and we're going to come back to this in just a little bit, uh, because I'm going to do a black and white version, and we're going to do export final black and white. So you're going to see how, like, I like to create different versions of my files and then name those versions with the actual file name. It's really helpful. Okay, there we go. So let's go ahead and close that out. Now, we're not doing anything with video, so we don't need to see this video for now. File settings, this is really important. Most of the time, if you're gonna be uploading this to this to the web for social media, you're gonna to wanna to choose JPEG. But if you wanna, for instance, like put this, just, you know, put the images in another place, like if you just wanna, you know, if you have, wanna make a copy of images from one place to another, you can export for as an original, you can export as a DNG. Of course, you have all these different uh, like file formats that you can use, but JPEG is kinda of like the most, uh, the most commonly used. Quality, we're going to leave it 100, and then color space, you want to be sRGB. This is going to make sure it shows up really well on the web and social media. All right, let's go ahead and close that down. Content credentials, now this is early access, which is actually really cool, because you can actually add information into your photographs that's going to link them to you. So it basically creates like another layer of security. All right, you can say, I want to attach published content credentials to the cloud. You can attach them to your files. That's really cool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and say, yep, I want to say that I'm a producer as a Veronese. And yes, all this information is going to be actually embedded in the file. So again, this is a very new feature, but I really do recommend attaching it to your files. All right, there we go. Now our image sizing, you can resize your image. This is a fantastic place to do this if you wanna upload an image uh, you know, full size for like social media but maybe you wanna do a smaller size for your website or something like that, because sometimes on the website, you don't wanna upload a full size image because it'll take a lot longer to load. So you can go ahead and resize it here. Um, I wouldn't use this necessarily for like 
print, like if you're going to print a five by seven photograph, um, personally, what I would do is I would use the crop tool and then use a five by seven ratio and then just export it at the highest quality. Just a heads up there. Okay. I'll put sharpening. I generally don't sharpen this because a lot of the time these images are going to go on social media and all those platforms will sharpen your image uh, when you upload it. So I don't recommend using output sharpening because it'll just double sharpen and it doesn't look that great a lot of the time. Okay. Now metadata, of course, we want to include all the metadata. This is going to be, we talked about this earlier in the series, but this is where you can actually put your copyright information, your name, your address, your email address, your phone number, whatever you want. It's going to include all that in the actual file. So I do recommend including all metadata. That's really important. Okay. Watermarking, we're going to talk about this tomorrow, but basically you can put your uh, logo onto this photo during export. You can put your name on there. It's really helpful in the like in the back and forth process. Like um, if you're going to send the client some proofs to say, here are these images, how are they looking? And they're going to say, they look great. Okay, I'll send my final payment. And then you release the like full version of the image. So Watermarking is really helpful. I think it's great for protecting photographers. Um, I generally do it like during the process when I'm working with a client. And then once they've already paid, then they get the full resolution images with no watermark. But we're going to show you how to do that tomorrow. Okay. And then post processing after export, you can actually like show it, you know, you can say, hey, show me where this is in Finder and things like that. Okay. But generally, I just say do nothing. Fantastic. Now, all of these settings that you went ahead and create, you can make a preset here as you want. Now, these are export presets, okay? So if you have a preset for, uh, you know, like uh, Instagram and you only want to upload images that have been like resized to 1000 by 1000, you can go in and hit add and then name it. There we go. Hit create. And then fantastic. You can just have all these same settings in there. And that way you don't have to go ahead and you know, click on all this stuff every time. All right. I generally don't use presets that often, but they are there. It's just going to save all these settings. Okay. Now the big thing to remember here is we, we did rename it to a custom file name and here in the export location, I have choose folder, uh, later. All right. So let's go ahead and click on export and it's going to just bring up my finder window. Now I'm going to just go ahead and bring up my sample images folder that's included. Don't forget, you can download this raw file completely free. Just click on the link right down below. So I'm going to just include it in the sample images. So it's going to be in my sample images folder and we're going to click here on open. Fantastic. And you can see it's exporting out one file. Fantastic. Now here in finder, we can see I have export.dng. This is the actual raw file. And then here we have export color file. So this is a JPEG image and it's ready to be shared on social media. Perfect. Now we're going to do one more version of this. I told you we were going to do a black and white version and we're going to rename that as well. So let's go here to your basic. Okay. And we're going to click right on black and white. Perfect. Now with black and white, we have this really nice black and white slider and you can actually adjust these settings here as well, which allows you to give it a really cool mix. Let's just make the sky a little bit darker. I think that's going to look really cool. There we go. And we're going to go back to basic and just look, kind of lower our contrast. All right. That's looking really good. Maybe just up the clarity just a little bit. All right, cool. So we now have another version that's black and white. So we're going to go to file and then down here to export one more time. And then literally everything else is going to stay the same, but where it says rename to, remember, we still have these settings set to this custom setting, this recipe that we made. So here where it says custom text, we're going to still, still say final, but here instead of saying color, I'm going to say like B and W, okay? So this is going to be our final edit, black and white. And then I'm going to click here on export. Okay. Just make sure to put it in the same exact place. Click on open. There we go. And I'm just going to click and drag this here in my finder window. And now you can see I have my black and white with my original. So this is my original raw file. This is my color JPEG that I just exported. I can hit space bar to see it. And then this is my black and white JPEG that I just exported out. So we can see how easy it is to export multiple different versions of your images. And by using that custom recipe for file renaming, you can actually kind of like name your edits in there, which I think is really, really helpful. And of course, in this case, I'm doing a color in black and white. But, you know, if you're working with your clients, you could say like, you know, this is going to be like a proof, you know, like for instance, I'll, I'll just do one more example here. All right. Let's just go back in our history. OK, we're just going to go back to before I converted this to black and white. Okay, 
We're going to go to File, down here to Export. Okay, now this time we're going to rename this. I'm just going to call this Proof, okay? So this is going to be something that I would send to my clients. I don't want to send this full size, so we're going to go to Image Sizing. Let's say Resize, and I'm going to put the image on the long edge. Let's go ahead and say 1,000 pixels. That's okay. Maybe, well, let's say 800 pixels. You don't want to always send your clients uh, full-size images while you're if you haven't gotten paid, I'm just trying to protect you. Basically, that's that's kind of how this works. Um, and then you could even put a watermark on here. Let's just say watermark. We're going to just do a simple copyright watermark. Um, you can edit your watermarks. We're going to talk about this tomorrow, but it's just going to say at Aaron Nason and then put it in the bottom left corner. All right. So let's go ahead and save that. You know what? Sometimes if you are just going to do a proof, uh, I know it's a little bit crazy, but I like to make it a little bit larger, just like that. And then just like really lower the opacity down just like that it gives you a little preview of that all right let's hit save all right call this air and large and then we're going to click on export and then i'm going to again just put it in the same folder and hit okay fantastic so here in finder again here is my proof so you can see the dimensions of this i resized it are 533 by 800 so you can see this is a much smaller file than my originals and here you can see on the very bottom i do have my watermark on there as well. So this could be something that you send to your clients to like, hey, do you like this images? And they could say, yeah, I do. And you could say, okay, perfect. That sounds good. Um, you finish your contract and then you would send them the final full size image. You can see it's much larger. And then this would be like what you actually send them. So all of these export settings and the renaming settings are really helpful. Uh, again, you have your file names, you have like what you're actually working on in the file names, which I personally find incredibly helpful. And then here in Lightroom, it stays simple because you just still have this one photograph, but you've exported out multiple different versions. Well, I really hope this helps. Exporting out is a big part of the process and there are so many amazing settings that you can choose from. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give us a big thumbs up here on YouTube. It really helps, honestly, it does. And if you wanna get more free tutorials, simply click on subscribe. Thanks again, and I will learn you later. Bye, everyone.